Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would talk about this little video that I found interesting. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the 175 pound division, which of course, if you know anything about boxing, that is what is known as the light heavyweight division. And I think that the light heavyweight division, I think that that has really been a division that has been very highly competitive for the past several years. You've had some great names there. Even Andre Ward at one point in time was there. Sergey Kovalev, Jean Pascal, Adonis Stevenson, Alexander Vosdick. Now, of course, you have Archer Bidabeev, Dimitri Bavol, Joe Smith Jr. You know, this new kid on the block, Anthony Yard. Although he's not that new, but he got a decent win in his last victory, I believe, over a British fighter by the name of Lyndon Arthur. But we'll see where he goes. And then, of course, uh, you had Marcus Brown, who recently lost to Archer Bidabeev. And there may even be a few other fighters that... I'm not currently remembering at the moment. Of course, Zerto Ramirez, I forgot about him. But the big question in all of this, in my opinion, of course, is Canelo Alvarez overall going to eventually face a lot of these fighters at 175? And is he potentially possibly going to unify at the 175 pound division? And of course, we're going to be reviewing a Dante's Boxing Nation video once again. Because, of course, Dante's Boxing Nation, he loves himself some Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> or at least he loves talking about him and trying to tear his career down once again. But this is an interesting video. Because the title of this video, as you can see right here, as I'm going to show it, it says, There's a new threat at light heavyweight, and it's Anthony. And, of course, you know, the complete thing is Anthony Yard. Which I find very, very interesting. Because, of course, what we know about Dante's Boxing Nation, when he have, whenever he talks about Canelo Alvarez, or a fighter that he tends not to like, He'll end up making excuses for the victories that they end up having. We've seen it with Tyson Fury. We've seen it overall with Vasily Lomachenko, at least to a degree. And we've certainly seen it with Sobo Canelo Alvarez. So I think that overall is going to be very, very interesting to see what Dante's point is going to be. And overall, why <laughs> he thinks all in all that, you know, it is necessary to put Anthony Yard on a high level or at least on the A grade level. Because he is a fighter that already has two losses in his career. He's a fighter that lost a decision once to this dude, Lyndon Arthur. And on top of that, he also was able to get knocked out by Sergey Kovalev. Now, he did have a very tough fight against Sergey Kovalev. But once again, if you're asking me, do I think that Anthony Yard is a serious threat to a certain amount of people later on down the line? Well, it depends who we're talking about. If we're talking about Anthony Yard versus a Joe Smith Jr. or Anthony Yard versus a Marcus Brown at this point in time, yeah, I would say that, you know, he's a decent threat to them. But do I think that he's a threat to Dimitri Bivol or Arthur B2B at their best? Or a Canelo Alvarez? No, personally, I don't. Or, you know, also the new Mexican kid on the block, Zerto Ramirez. Do I think all in all that he's a big threat to those guys? Not necessarily, because I don't think that he has their skill sets. But I would have to look at Anthony Yard maybe a little bit more. Anyways, we're going to see what Dante's Boxing Nation has to say. Let's get into it. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So the light heavyweight division is starting to be one of the deepest divisions in boxing today with this new addition of Anthony Yard, who just recently got a sensational knockout win over Lyndon Arthur, a fight actually I wanted to cover, but it was too much going on that weekend. That was the weekend that Devin Haney fought Jojo Diaz and Javante, he faced Isaac Cruz. Well, during that busy... I think that it's very interesting that Dante's Boxing Nation is trying to put Anthony Yard on a high level. Uh, I've said actually in previous videos that in my opinion, Anthony Yard, he's not really on that A grade level. Maybe he can be upgraded to A minus if you really wanted to put him there, but eh, I, I, I don't really know if I would put him on that level. Because someone that got knocked out by the version of Sergey Kovalev that he did, don't get me wrong, Sergey Kovalev was still an A grade fighter. But if you're a person that is really looked at as debatably the most talented overall in the whole entire division, you're supposed to win that fight against Sergey Kovalev. And once again, there were some competitive rounds, but Sergey Kovalev was pretty much able to completely outbox his ass. <laughs> and then he got the complete knockout. I mean, he made Anthony Yard pretty much look like an amateur. So that's why, in my opinion, at least until proven, Anthony Yard, in my opinion, even though he ended up getting this, you know, great victory over Lyndon Arthur in this rematch, I just don't see Anthony Yard. I just don't see him as an A-grade fighter. But we'll see what happens weekend of boxing Anthony Yard was able to but once again like I said one has to wonder why Dante's boxing nation is trying to promote Anthony Yard because of course Canelo Alvarez when he fought Danny Jacobs or when he fought Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Plant or when he fought a certain amount of these other fighters even certain black fighters 
what he's always said about Mr. Canelo Alvarez is that he either fights them off of their worst performances or he fights people overall that have already had losses in their careers. So what I'm wondering is that is he basically <laughs> trying to use Anthony Yard because maybe Canelo does not look at him as a future opponent. Is he maybe overall going to say that Canelo is not facing him because he's a black fighter? And all in all, he's basically going to use him, you know, for the NBF type of narrative that he loves to try to promote. We'll see what happens. Exact his revenge on Lyndon Arthur, a fighter that he had just previously lost to in somewhat of a controversial decision. In the first fight, Anthony Yard, he fought more of a tactical fight, a chess match that benefited Lyndon Arthur. In the rematch, Anthony Yard, he was extremely aggressive. He was completely on the offense, but he wasn't getting caught with anything stupid. He knocked him out in the fourth round. Now he's in position to fight for the winner of Joe Smith versus Calum Johnson for the WBO title. And I shouldn't even say the winner. Joe Smith should most likely win that fight, and that's going to be a hell of a fight. Styles definitely make fights, and if you look at the style matchup, it looks like Anthony Yard, he would beat Joe Smith, but at the same time... I'm not 100% so sure about that. I think that Anthony Yard and Joe Smith, they're about on the same level. Maybe you could argue. Now, once again, I would have to take a look at Anthony Yard completely in the rematch. I would have to see, you know, what Anthony Yard brings to the table. Of course, he does have very decent power. You can maybe even debate that he has a great power. But that's almost everyone at the light heavyweight division. <laughs> once you start getting to the light heavyweight division, a lot of those boys really start having a hell of a lot of power. Even possibly even, you know, one-shot knockout power. You know, even just several years ago, like when you had Sergey Kovalev and Adonis Stevenson and, you know, Jean Pascal and almost every single one of those guys had one shot knockout power. The only one that was there that didn't have one shot knockout power, at least usually, was Andre Ward. Because Andre, he was never really an all time great puncher, but of course he could hurt you if he hit you right. Joe Smith is extremely durable, very powerful. You know, it's all going to. I agree. Joe Smith Jr., he's another one kind of like Deontay Wilder. I believe that he actually got into the boxing game a little bit late. Now, if I'm wrong about that, someone correct me, but I do believe that he did get into the boxing game a little bit late because I believe that his primary job was that he was a construction worker. So he was another one, kind of like how Deontay Wilder got into it. A lot of people who get into fighting, either MMA or boxing, you know, it was not their first passion, <laughs> but they got into it because either eventually, you know, once they got into boxing, they got bitten overall by the combat bug. You know, and once you get bitten by it, you love the sport. You really almost get obsessed with it. I know that's what happened with me. And I'm sure it happened with a certain amount of you people, whether you have sparred in a gym before or whether you're just a boxing fan or, you know, maybe you're both. I don't know. But when it comes down to the overall bottom line is this. Uh, Joe Smith Jr., actually for, you know, him not having that extensive of a background, at least from what I've heard, his skill set is somewhat decently impressive. He's never going to be someone that, you know, is overall the best in that division. But he is someone to watch out for. He is someone that can be dangerous. He has at least a B grade skill set. And he definitely has A grade power. There's no doubt about it. If Joe Smith hits you flush with a good shot, <laughs> you know, he's uh he's gonna hurt you. Come down to how Anthony Yard is You know, a great fight actually would be David Benavides versus Joe Smith. I'd like to see that. Now, of course, some people may say, Well, don't you think David Benavides is a little bit too small for some of those guys? Not at all, because let me tell you what, to taking a look at David Benavidez, his ass can barely make 168 as it is. He's going to deal with that unorthodox pressure. But if Anthony Yard gets past Joe Smith, which I believe he will, that makes him a major player at the light heavyweight division. And with all the dangerous champions at light heavyweight, it makes it very difficult for Canelo Alvarez to navigate. Where does Canelo go from here? If once again, I mean, he's not even, he hasn't even been interested in fighting Joe Smith as a champion at light heavyweight. So I know. Well, the big question, Dante, that I have for you is that if Canelo were to beat any one of those fighters, are you even going to give him credit in the first place? <laughs> because Joe Smith Jr. and Anthony Yard, those are guys that already have multiple losses in their career. So are you really going to give him a whole bunch of credit if Canelo Alvarez really were to go up there and beat them? I highly doubt it. You know, because Dante, once again, he'll say one thing in a video and then the next video, he'll basically completely contradict what he said. Dante, Dante doesn't give a shit what comes out of his mouth. Oh, if Anthony Yard beats Joe Smith, he definitely won't be interested in that fight. You have better BF. You have Bivol. Gilberto Ramirez and now Anthony Yard. That is a hell of a wall to knock down just to win a title for Canelo Alvarez. 
very, very stable. I think that, once again, I think that 175, it's a very tricky division. It's very decently competitive. It has a lot of talent there. And the good thing about 175, or, you know, bad thing, whatever, you know, you want to put it as, but just in terms of competitiveness, in terms of competition, A-grade competition, almost every single one of those top-tier fighters, they have A-grade power. Anthony Yard has very good power. You know, Gilberto Zerto Ramirez has very good power. Uh, Arthur Bidabif has extraordinary power. Dimitri Bavall has very good power. Joe Smith Jr., if I didn't mention him, he has very good power. You know, there's a few others that maybe I'm not mentioning. Sergey Kovalev, who knows, maybe he still may be in the mix, but I don't I don't see him coming back after <laughs> Canelo Alvarez. He took a lot of damage in that second Andre Ward fight. Uh, and then on top of that, he got knocked out by a later Alvarez. And then after that, he had a very rough fight with Anthony Yard, where he mainly dominated, but he did have a couple tough rounds. You know, nearly did get stopped in one of the rounds. But then against Canelo Alvarez, where Canelo, he knocked him out pretty proper. I don't see Sergey Kovalev coming back. But we'll see what happens. Back division. It's nothing like the 168-pound division. The sweet division. At least for Canelo Alvarez. Ain't nothing sweet at 175. Well, there was nothing too sweet overall at 168 either. <laughs> because Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders. You know, those guys, of course, they don't have the power of some of the 175-pounders. But, you know, like I said, those are eight great boxers, you know. Now, if Canelo were to beat Joe Smith Jr. or Anthony Yard next, you know, let's say whoever were to still have the title, because I do expect Joe Smith Jr. to beat Callum Johnson or uh, whatever the hell the dude's name is, but I do believe you pronounce it Callum, you know, perhaps for one of you uh, British <laughs> dudes out there, you know, if anyone who's British watches my channel, maybe perhaps you could correct me if I'm wrong. But when it comes down to the overall bottom line is this, uh, I expect Joe Smith Jr. to get past that fight, and if him and Anthony Yard were to happen next, that'd be a colossal fight. Just like there was nothing sweet at 154 and 160, which is why Canelo never attempted to become undisputed there. But the best thing about the light heavyweight division is there's so many great fighters and champions there, they don't have to rely on getting a Canelo Alvarez fight. In fact, the more they fight against each other, the best fighting the best, the more pressure that puts on a Canelo Alvarez when he's fighting the Macaboos and the Rocky Fieldings and the Yildirims of the world. You see, when it comes to Anthony Yard... Right, but once again, Makabu, in my opinion, that's not the worst fight out there. At least if Canelo lets him rehydrate up the full max weight. Now, maybe he won't. And if he, you know, if he if he does weigh during Makabu, I will have to criticize him at least a little bit, or then I cannot compare that on the Roy Jones Jr. versus, say, John Ruiz level. You know, because Canelo will have to let him rehydrate fully if it wants to be compared on that level, because that's what Jones Jr., I believe, did with John Ruiz. So we'll see what happens. I believe, anyway, if I'm wrong, then correct me. But when it comes down to it, all in all, we'll see what happens. At 175, he's the only fighter bringing that athletic slick style to the division. He has somewhat... Uh, <laughs> actually, personally, in my opinion, the only one that I've really seen with the athletic slick style probably was Marcus Brown. But Marcus Brown, I mean... I don't really know how much more left he has really in the gas tank ever since he lost to Arthur Bitterbeef. It still would be a decent fight for Canelo, but, <laughs> you know, Marcus Brown, he's pretty much done. I mean, you know, the, the, after that the, after that John Pascal fight, I think that he still had something left in the tank. I would rank him as an A-minus fighter, you know, maybe even an A-grade fighter. But after that, <laughs> after that Arthur Bitterbeef fight, that dude is done. I mean, Arthur Bitterbeef, he, he completely changes you as a fighter. Of an American type of slick style, if you will. So he's earned. I'm not so sure about that. I don't know really what Dante sees in Anthony Yard, but if I had to guess, more than likely, I don't think that he believes that Anthony Yard is going to beat Canelo, but I think that he is going to try to use his name to dare down Canelo Alvarez. And when the time comes, I think all he's going to basically say is, well, Canelo, he just beat someone with multiple losses on his record already and someone who was already knocked out. But <laughs> we'll see what happens. Earned a shot at the title to fight against Joe Smith, or at least Joe Smith versus Caleb Johnson winner. And I'm really, really looking forward and expecting Anthony Yard to make some serious noise next year, 2022. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Well, after cheer service. Anyways, that's really all I got for this video as well. But I just find that very, very interesting. And the big question overall is this. Will Canelo Alvarez unified 175 pounds? And will he even be able to in the first place? Because that division overall is no joke. Now, once again, I thought that 168 was a division overall that was very decently deep as well, or 
somewhat deep, you know. I'm not going to say that it was the deepest division in boxing, but Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders, and Callum Smith, all those guys, in my opinion, are A-grade fighters, you know. And Callum Smith, he's someone that, you know, he's a bit stiff, but he has A-grade power. <laughs> like, that dude actually, that's probably that was probably a great fight for Canelo Alvarez to actually take because that's a dude all in all. Now, he wasn't able to get a whole lot of shots off on Canelo Alvarez, but Callum Smith, he's a person that, you know, he has really, really good power. So it is what it is. But anyways, it's going to be very interesting to see where Canelo Alvarez goes from here. Can he beat some of the top light heavyweights? Because these guys, they are going to be a little bit more of a challenge for him. It's going to be very, very interesting. I think Canelo is already, in terms of height and reach anyways, already a little bit outside the super middleweight. But there's no one at super middleweight that I would personally bet to beat Canelo Alvarez. Like I said, there's only one fighter in the world that I would say maybe has a 50-50 shot with Canelo. And I think that it's Archer Beaterbeef. Now, of course, if we're talking about cruiserweight, if we're talking about a fight that's actually going to happen there without a weight drain, then, of course, if an Alexander Usyk fight were to happen, you know, I may even have to favor Alexander Usyk because he's so much bigger than Canelo. And on top of that, he has an A-grade skill set. But I just don't know if that fight would happen, or at least not right now. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, <laughs> that's pretty much about it for today. I just thought that that was really, really interesting. If you're asking me who I think are the main players at 175, I think the main players overall, I think that Joe Smith Jr. and Anthony Yard, they're talented, but I don't think that they're within that top three. I think the top three right now, as of right now, would probably A, have to be Archer B to B, B, Dimitri Bavol, because I think that those are the two most complete fighters, not only in terms of athleticism, but in boxing skills. And then C, I think overall would be Gilberto Zerto Ramirez. Those would be the biggest threats, in my opinion, at that weight class. But we'll see, of course, what happens. Anyways, that's really about it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.